So I will now show some of the basic features of the process designer in YOL. I launch an instance of that. And now I will create a new process specification. I will create a very simple specification made up of uh, just four tasks. And then I can use this to connect the tasks. I can also specify the joining and splitting behavior for each task. For example, here I specify that there is an XOR split and then I am allowed to connect it to more outgoing tasks. And here I can specify a joining behavior. For example, I can put an end join. And then I can connect it to the final condition. And I can also set the specification of the decomposition of a task. For example, this task could be a simple A. And here I'm allowed, I can also specify task variables for this, uh, uh, for this task. So let's just give simple names to these tasks. Create one with C, the other with D. Okay. Now I can run some basic checks of my model. First, I can check the syntax of the model, and any result will be reported here. Essentially, this is saying that there are no design time validation problems because what this uh, does is that it checks that all the, mo all the modeling elements are essentially on a path from the start to the end condition. And so there are no disconnections. In other words, there are no dangling tasks. But then I can run some more advanced tests. I can verify the behavioral correctness of this model. So I do that by this, mo uh, by this button, analyze this specification. So the specification results are shown here, that's the time that it took, and then I can see in more detail the problems that this model is suffering from. As we can see, it is evident that this model doesn't have an option to complete. In fact, task D is dead, and we can say that we can check that from the specification analysis problems, is a dead task because there is an end join that is creating a deadlock. Because as we know, this XOR split would only send one token out, either to the B task or to the C task. So this is just a glimpse of the verification capabilities of the YOL editor. And this has been done very, with a very simple example. Uh, for more complex examples that also include or join or cancellation regions, more advanced analysis can be done. For example, in the context of cancellation regions, if the or join is not present, we can use reset nets so we convert the YOL model into a uh, reset net and then we can analyze the reset net. Okay, now let's close this toy example and let's open a realistic example. So this is a um, um, reference model that we built from the Voluntary Inter-Industry Commerce Solution Standard or the VIX reference model. VIX is a reference model for supply chain management and logistics. And it is a very large uh, initiative that has been endorsed by a number of organizations worldwide. Uh, for example, Nike, Motorola, IBM. Essentially, this model defines the steps these organizations have to go through in order to handle their logistics department. So this is the main net or the root net in YOL. And it is made up of uh, five simple tasks. There is an ordering stage, then we have the carrier appointment, where we set up the details for the freight to be delivered, like the weight, how many carriers we have to use, uh, how many trucks we have to fill up, and so on. Then, during the freight in transit, um, any action that we can do, for example, checking the status of the freight, like which truck points has already been reached and which others are still to be reached, uh, all these operations can be done within this task, freight in transit. The payment task handles the finance aspect, the financial aspects of the an order fulfillment. So, for example, the payment for the freight, as well as for the payment for the shipment. And then, as the freight has been delivered, we can handle claims from the client, like for loss or damaged freight. Each of these is a composite task or compound task in your for example, ordering actually is linked to an, an underlying net, which is the ordering net. Here, we essentially handle the creation of the purchase order. 
the first task we can create the purchase order and this is a manual task uh, so a manual task is a task that is assigned to some human participant in our organization for example by accessing the manage resourcing wizard to the right uh, um, panel of, uh, of a task then we can take some decisions at three key resource a key, uh, three key decision points for the resource assignment first is the offering then we have the allocation of a work item and finally the starting of a work item offering means that we have to establish we have to decide on a distribution set that is the set of users that are going to be offered this task and it is possible to do that by the system meaning that as we decide the distribution set then the system will automatically offer uh, this work item to all participants within this distribution set or user essentially an admin an administrator at runtime on an instance by instance basis decides who this task should be who this work item should be offered to then allocation once the distribution set has been established and a number of participants have been offered this task if we select the user option then the user can automatically allocate the work item to themselves by means of a pooling mechanism otherwise if we choose the system by means of a pushing mechanism the system itself will automatically allocate the work item to one of the participants within the distribution set of the participants that have been offered this work item and finally the starting of a work item it could be started automatically by the system as soon as a user has been allocated this work item or manually by the user uh, whenever they decide to do so the second screen allows us to define such a distribution set on the left hand side I can see the list of participants that are within my organizational model so essentially the YOL editor now is connected with the resource service and is using interface R and interface O to retrieve information from the organizational model and the participants that populate this organizational model while in the second list I have the list of roles that belong to my organization and I can see that this task create purchase order has been offered well the distribution set is made up of all participants that have role purchase order manager also another option is to do a deferred offering meaning that I can establish, I can determine the distribution set at runtime dynamically by specifying now at the same time a variable which will contain the information of the participant that needs to be allocated this work item at runtime so in this case I'm not selecting this but just the purchase order manager so I'm defining statically at the same time the distribution set of this work item. Next, I can apply sir, uh, some filtering to this distribution set. For example, I can filter it by capability. I can decide that yes, I want all purchase order managers to be offered this task, but upon the, um, but uh, among them, I only want those that all that are master in supply chains and logistics management. Or I can also uh, filter that by organizational data. So, for example, all purchase order managers that belong to the warehouse department or that have a position of uh, assistant head of the ordering department. So, there are various filtering that I can apply. Also, here I have some options to establish runtime constraints. For example, I can give users the option to pile all the work items across all instances of this order fulfillment process to themselves. So runtime, a user, if we take this option like now, will be offered this possibility of piling the task, the work item, to themselves. And from that point on, all instances of this task create purchase order will be automatically offered to this participant. And finally, I can define certain uh, um, privileges for the uh, users that will be assigned this task, for example the privilege to suspend this task, the privilege to delegate the work, I a work item of this task to another participant, to deallocate, to reallocate with or without state uh, preservation and so on. 
So we see that this task has been assigned to all participants with role purchase sorted manager. Then the approval should be done by somebody who's higher up in the hierarchy, in the organizational model. So I can assign this. I have assigned this to a senior supply officer, so somebody who in the hierarchical model is above the purchase sorted manager, and so on. So this is a simple net. How does it work? I create the purchase sorted then the purchase order needs to be approved. Once it has been approved, we have three options. First, we can modify the purchase order. Second, we can confirm the purchase order. And the third option is a timeout. In fact, the first two options, modification or confirmation, can only be done until a timeout expires. In fact, if the timeout expires, then it will no longer be possible to modify or to confirm the purchase order. And essentially, the case will be closed. Um, this is, in fact, an automated task, different than a manual task. This is an automated task because it's been assigned to a timeout function. So I can set this operation by right-clicking on the task and going to set task timeout. So the task is required to timeout, and then I can specify either a time, an absolute time, like a date, or a duration. In this case, it's three days. This means that I have three days to modify or confirm the purchase order, otherwise the case will be closed. And many such deadlines could be set uh, across process models like this one. And in realistic scenario, it is very likely to find that there are fixed durations for doing certain tasks. So the second net is a more complex net. And it deals with all operations that have to be done in relation with the carrier appointment. For example, we can decide the routing guide, that is the list of track points that, that have to be traversed by the freight in transit. I can also determine the trailer usage and so on. For example, here we have a cancellation region because uh, this part, that is the definition of the routing guide and the estimation of the trailer usage, can only be done within a carrier timeout. And this carrier timeout is actually defined dynamically by a net variable carrier timeout. And this net variable is established by means of this task, by running an instance of this task, which is calculate carrier timeout. So essentially, the carrier timeout is not fixed like the purchase order timeout, which was only three days, but needs to be determined depending on the characteristics of the purchase order which I can only know after I have completed the ordering sub-process.